the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Welcome back. This is the Sports Vote Campaign update for Sunday, July 18th, 2021. Again, I'm reading this directly out of my notes, so there may be some repeats. First, the pending SEC case consists only of the corporate grants that were part of the programs and has nothing to do whatsoever with the market itself or sports shares. That being said, I do understand that it creates a headwind, but to be absolutely clear, the matter does not concern the actual market operation itself. The pilot market is exactly that. It's a pilot for the real market. It's an experimental market that's defined in the terms of service. It's been that way since the beginning. Um, The SEC case is currently in mediation. Um, We'll see how that turns out. Again, I'm going to say this over and again. Above all the other arguments that we have, the fact that we were asked to remove mention of the no-action request, which was filed more than five years ago and still has not been acted upon, is going to doom this case if it ever goes to trial. The best the SEC can hope for is a hung jury. I guarantee it. No jury is going to understand this. No jury is going to understand why they never acted on the no action, and they asked me surreptitiously to remove mention of it. We do not fit the legal definition of a Ponzi scheme. Look it up. I covered this in detail on the notice board. If you want to see more details on this, what I mean by that and how it doesn't fit, it does not fit. Uh, Read the notice board if you want to see the details. Ending sports gambling is our mission. That's been on the homepage since almost the very start. Uh, So some folks need to get comfortable with that. It's not going to change. In fact, ASM would have never existed in the first place if it wasn't for what I saw from the inside more than 20 years ago in Costa Rica in that industry. The SEC CFTC no action, which was sent more than five years ago, clearly spells out the goals and that we're an experimental uh, market. It explains our goals and the fact that this is an experimental market. Some folks don't seem to want to understand that because it serves their opposite agenda or their own personal interest, but that's the reality of it. It's all spelled out in the no action request, which has been acted upon by neither agency. So Binance, the... um, Crypto exchange is, talks about compliance being a journey. Well, that's funny. They're operating now and uh, compl- uh, c- claiming that compliance is a journey. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. However, I think that we're being treated uh, hypocritically on this matter by the regulators. Um, you know, be consistent. Uh, either enforce the laws all the way across or don't enforce the laws all the way across. Otherwise, it's selective enforcement, which is absolutely unjust. And as far as the um, gambling market goes, the Wire Act, 60 years old. Sorry, folks, that's not going away. Um, You know, if we're not going to enforce an anti-corruption statute from 60 years ago, then we don't have any laws and we're just pretending like we do. Um, The number uh, 0001 sports share NFT was featured on the Mentable homepage. Just a quick mention of that. DraftKings has an entire page of lawsuits uh, now on their profile page on Yahoo. uh, And also, I see the same thing under Apple News. Congratulations. Uh, Wyoming is the first state to amend their corporate uh, LLC structures to account for DAOs. Look that up if you don't know what that is. This uh, has to do with uh, the crypto world. We've had no programs of any kind uh, for almost a year or about a year now. It's getting very close. Uh, No contributions. The costs of keeping ASM alive through this more than 100-year financial catastrophe pandemic, which has destroyed tens of thousands of businesses in the U.S. and hundreds of thousands of businesses around the world, has been done by um, a very small group of people, including myself. Uh, So, We haven't received any help from anybody. We haven't even asked for any help from anybody else. It's all been carried on the backs of the same handful of insiders that kept it alive in every other time where it's had difficulties, Um, uh, you know, staying alive through these crazy events that seem to keep happening. So uh, if you want to help, uh, you know, it would be appreciated. I understand that the crypto thing is a little bit confusing at this point. Um, That's kind of the issue. I've been saying this for a while. 
I am not advocating uh, for cryptos. I'm only indicating that the Ethereum uh, system, because it, it has application built in for NFTs, uh, you know, the, the Ethereum is just the transit currency to get the NFT. It's not uh, something that I'm advocating people hold or any other cryptocurrency. I, I don't I have not changed my position. This is a blockchain implementation and which we have been uh, an advocate of. In fact, we have registered and pending IP based around blockchain. The issue has never been blockchain and NFTs are uh, installed on the blockchain. So that's the issue, not the crypto itself. It's just a way to get from here to there. But if you would like to help, um, you know, please do participate in in acquiring some of these NFTs as that will be some component of deferring costs going forward, along with a few other things we're, we're working on. I think, uh, you know, a year of carrying this on our backs without asking for any help is uh, more than most people would do. In fact, I'm sure of it. So. Uh, fifth grade Ponzi explanation. You know this is more detailed again on the uh, the notice board. But in in basic summary, uh, interest on the dividend reserves, simple interest on the dividend reserves, which will uh, remain at very you know in the real final market, they will um, be stable to growing. Probably growing. It's really it depends greatly on the the rate of increase of trader activity, but based on past performance. These balances are likely to increase over time, which means that we can put that money into even just simple investment, uh, drawing very low rates of return, and it will uh, add to the dividend reserves from a passive source. That by itself uh, is going to destroy the Ponzi scheme um, definition, although there are other parts of it too, such as having legitimate business activity. In our case, it's raising money for sports leagues. So um, 10%, um, the, the, the computation of how the initial dividend reserves will be funded is also explained in there. There's a 5% fee to the league, and then 5% uh, also uh, on top of that goes into the starting dividend reserves. That starts up the balance, so it's a total of 10%. It's consistent with what I've said previously about 10% across the board being a good number for the value-added tax you know, 10% to charity, that's pretty commonly known. And I would go one further and say that if there could be international agreement on a 10% VAT and a 10% contribution to legitimate charity, so basically 20% would would be taken off the top of everything worldwide, the world's problems would be solved, and uh, the remaining 80% that everybody would have would go a lot further. So the NFTs are resellable. Um, I'm going to change up some of the configurations. You're going to notice that uh, some of them have, you know, look in the description part to see the specific benefits for each one. I'm going to shift it around a bit to see if it makes any difference in terms of what you get when you uh, acquire one of these NFTs. Um, again, there there is a, uh, a little bit of a, a, a difficulty in, in getting into the system. If you use... If you use the um, mentable credit card system, there is a verification process, and it's not available everywhere. But if you go online and Google uh, buy Ethereum, there are a lot of different places that you can do that, and then you can transfer it to the um, to the wallet. I actually have that information also published on the notice board. I realize this is not as simple as uh, as just clicking a button on a, for a credit card, but that's kind of the point. I've been saying this about uh, the whole crypto world is kind of like this, but in order to get the NFT side, which I do believe has value, um, you know the um, the value of it being that we do live in a digital world, and the authentication of uh, digital assets is is a real thing. I mean, movies are digital assets, music are digital assets, and so that makes sense to me. And Ethereum is the largest. Um, platform, blockchain platform that that exists that has this built into it. So the hints, the reason for using it. But I do understand it's kind of clunky, but, you know, um, I still think it's worth it. And I think you will, in, you know, learn some things about the crypto world in the process. But I will restate again that I am not an advocate of holding cryptos or thinking that that is an investment by itself. It is just a way to get from one place to another. In this case, to get uh, ac acquire and install digital assets on the most 
um, widely used blockchain system to do that, at least at this time, that's Ethereum. Uh, so I haven't changed my position on Bitcoin or any of those others. It's still creating something out of nothing. But at least with Ethereum, uh, you, you're able to do this, which, again, this is the NFT installation on blockchain, on a large blockchain, the Ethereum blockchain. So that's that. Uh, Trump's got some more PR social media lawsuits going on, which are going to go nowhere, although there is something to be learned just from watching how this plays out. People do not, uh, you know, people are not looking for truth. They're just looking for news headlines that fit their their pre-existing uh, conditions. Unfortunately, the way the search engines work, uh, that makes it very easy to put anything in the path of someone searching, looking to validate themselves and, and, and you know, truth be damned, just whatever it is you're looking for, just type it into a Google search engine. You're going to find a headline somewhere that supports what you want to already believe rather than finding the truth. And how to get out of this, um, you know, this vicious circle or cycle is um, is a really tough problem. And I don't have any answers at this point, um, at least none in the material world. Um, the other aspect of this, going back to the NFTs again, uh, the other aspect of this is that you can see the transactions. It's full visibility of the money that's changed hands. You can see the wallet address and where it goes. There's no there's no hiding of any money. Um, there aren't multiple accounts or any of those things, and I don't have any accounts. Uh, the only crypto account that or wallet that exists is the one for this uh, NFT system. That's the only one that exists um, for me. Uh, you know, personally, corporately, whatever. There is no other. I control no other. I know of no other. That's the only one. Um, and also, the other thing about N NFTs is that our open market concept, which is um, part of the patent filings, you know, that came about before the whole blockchain crypto thing took off. So we kind of intersect with that. We we had the idea of an open visibility marketplace, and then the whole blockchain open visibility thing kind of came along. Almost, I would it was almost simultaneously. I mean, it, very very close. I don't know which you know. I have to go back to literally the very first time it was brought up to see who was first, but it's really, really close. So this is also an extension of uh, of testing out that open market, kind of getting a feel for that because that's what you can do with uh, with the wallets. You know, with our well wallets, there's only one one wallet that we have. You can see what uh, how much money's gone in there, and where you know basically it's a chain, it's a trail. Um, based on, you know, like the NFTs, which for the market is still uh, quite active, it's growing, it's not getting smaller. Um, that's why I believe that Ethereum above the other cryptocurrencies has a real shot at, at success is because it's it's an application for the real world, the blockchain authentication of digital assets. That's a real thing. Um, there's starting to be some fights about uh, NFL data charges. It looks like the NFL is like double, triple, or quadruple something, double, double to quadruple the data uh, of, quote, official data fees uh, to, and, and that's going to be um, a competitive challenge is going to come from companies like Sport Radar. I still don't understand, and I don't think the market understands what the deal is with this official data uh, thing. It doesn't, I mean, you know, the activities of sports teams, that's kind of the whole point is that it's publicly observable. So I just think this is price gouging. They're probably looking to make up revenues that they're losing in all kinds of other places. Um, I'm starting to see uh, some of the issues that I mentioned, you know, pretty much from the beginning on crypto about the problems with it, uh, price fluctuations. Basically, if you don't earn in cryptocurrency, um, if you don't, basically, if your whole world is not denominated in whatever that cu currency I is, if you don't earn in it, if you don't save in it, if you don't spend in it, then you're going to be subject to price fluctuations against whatever national currency that you do use, for example, the dollar. And I'm already seeing like the price fluctuations have an impact on the already recorded sales of the SportShare NFTs that I've put out there. They've fluctuated up and down a couple dollars over a week, which is, you know, that's a tremendous price change. People have a hard enough time uh, keeping track of how much a gallon of milk costs. And again, I've said this before, and this is just playing out so that I can see it in real time, that these price instabilities are are an, are an issue. 
uh, if you know, unless your entire world exists in that cryptocurrency, which means that you don't really have a physical existence on this earth somewhere, because if you do, you're going to be deni- you're going to be dealing with the national currency on the ground. So um, yeah, this is a real issue. So uh, big uh, uptick in in uh, stock trading due to coronavirus. Um, you know, in terms of people. Uh, it's brought a lot of new people into apps like Robinhood, which has also had some issues. But um, I, I do see that as a positive thing in exposing the public to the idea of stock trading because that's um, that's the core uh, pl- paradigm that we're operating in. So to just move over from the gambling idea into the stock market idea, again, like the gambling, people are just creating customers for us. Well, the guys like Robinhood that are uh, bringing in new traders are doing the same thing in terms of bringing in new stock traders, which we, uh, you know, that's our side of things. That's our market there. So um, it's all good that they expose this to more and more people. So uh, yeah, the 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 DraftKings situation is is getting worse by the week. You can do your own research. The um, Hindenburg report has teeth. Otherwise, there would not be so many law firms piling on top of each other uh, to sue them. They're not going to do that. There's also the SPAC investigation coming. That's um, that's definitely going to be a problem. That's not even been addressed yet. Uh, you have Lordstown Motors that is um, another one that is, uh, you know, I would say is an equivalent mess. Uh, the whole SPAC thing is a shortcut and shouldn't be allowed, frankly. Um, it's it's a pretty obvious. Um, you know, you have DraftKings guys taking out hundreds of millions of dollars in compensation last year and a company that loses two dollars for every dollar and misses every quarterly, um, you know, down misses every quarterly projection on the downside. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, OK, so again, the uh, the um, price instability issues with crypto is a real thing. I can see it, you know, just in watching the recorded sales because the the um, transaction takes place in Ethereum and then it continues to mo- it continues to do the trend, the uh, current exchange rate every time it changes. So the the sold prices change even though the transaction is already done. So once again, um, e- Ethereum is just the transit currency to put it onto the Ethereum blockchain. That's that's it. That's the only reason for it. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for that, it, I wouldn't even mention Ethereum, but it is the largest blockchain that allows uh, the installation of NFTs on the blockchain. So, you know, that's where the market is. All right. So uh, Scumbag Leon needs needs apparently another 70 days to find some more money and lawyer lies to post up on the courts. Um I guess he wasn't ready to actually deal with this California matter, which the judicial side of it in terms of the, I'm sorry, the jurisdictional side of it, meaning the California never had jurisdiction, that's going to be a tough one to overcome because, um, well, it's the truth. Uh, There was a terms of service, you know, in place. He agreed to that terms of service. There's been case law about uh, foreign companies being subject to U.S. jurisdiction, the whole thing about, well, it's just he's he's able to use it by a website and therefore there's jurisdiction. Yeah, that's kind of been ripped apart. So we'll see. Um, we're going to do whatever's necessary to take this down. It's just a matter of time. It should have never happened. Um, frankly, 10 years ago, I shouldn't have been left uh, to fend for myself like I was, which is almost, uh, you know, we've got notes here, folks, you know, they're the ones that come around when everything is good and then run away or, or cause problems when 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 things don't go the right way. Uh, you're not coming back the third time. OK, so, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. So uh, you can forget about it. If uh, your part, you've made your decision about which side of the fence you're going to stand on, you're going to stay there. So uh, just like uh, Leon, who never showed his face once, never attended a single uh, hearing and all that, just hired a bunch of scoundrel lawyers to lie to the courts and tape my mouth shut so I couldn't uh, defend myself. Um, Look, if you're not willing to show your face, just like some other folks on the web, then you really need to shut the fuck up because I don't you're you're just a coward. Uh, You know, if you're not a coward, show your face, face up to the facts, be a man. And uh, otherwise, you're just a piece of shit coward. Okay, so 2008 was asteroid number one. Um, 
on ASM the crash, which tore apart our USFE deal and, and sent everybody scurrying into the wilderness. Uh, 2019, the SEC case. Believe me, when all the facts come out, there's going to be some real roach situations going on there in terms of backstabbers and people who have uh, really done the wrong thing. And it's, uh, there, you know, the truth will out. It always does. Unfortunately, it takes a while in most cases, but it's coming. So that's asteroid number two. Um, made things very, very difficult. And then coronavirus, of course, which wiped out tens of thousands of businesses, if not more. I mean, certainly in the U.S. it did, and hundreds of thousands of businesses around the world. We weren't one of them. In spite of every attempt to try to tear us apart, we're still here. The number one job has been and still is do not die like the others, um, in spite of three asteroid strikes in about 10 years. And uh, be grateful that we didn't throw the towel in like other people did. Uh, you know, uh, rather than uh, being a troublemaker and, and an asshole, why don't you actually look at the fact that uh, we're standing there protecting this through all of this. And remember, in my personal case, uh, there is no get rich. It's all when, when you know, bring the ship in and I, I have some uh, magical payday like the DraftKings dickheads. Uh, that's never going to happen. Uh, I'm standing in this, in this situation because I'm keeping a promise I made to do everything humanly possible to see this thing through, and that's why I'm here. That's it. I could be doing something else. It would be a lot easier and a lot more profitable than having to do all of this stuff and carry it on my back again, okay, again for the last year or so. So uh, I'm not obligated to do that other than just my moral obligation, which is paramount to me, frankly, uh, that I do everything possible to see this through, and that's why I'm here. So gratitude is really the right emotion. That's the right emotion. Um, so freedom of speech is not freedom of conse from consequences. Let me say that again. Freedom of speech is not freedom from consequences. Something that our former president is going to be finding out as time moves on more and more. And then finally, I just want to point out there is only one job to do after all of these years of hard work, there's only one thing left, only one, and that is to find or create a esports or sports league to list and publicize. We are well able to do public relations. We've shown that over and again. We took what we learned in Costa Rica. We amplified it in Hollywood, and actually the network has grown even over the last year or so just because of Ace's continued work in the studio business. So it's really down to that. Um, I'm confident that when we find or create that one esports or sports league and publicize it, that the um, that will turn the key on everything. I mean, it will all work. It will all snowball from that single thing. Everything else is in place. So with that, thank you very much for your time and have a nice afternoon. Bye now.